three basic concepts. Uh, first one was uh, sample of space. Now, first you have to, by default, probabilistic modeling of random experiment we do. So, first con basic concept happens to be sample of space. That means when we are going for probabilistic modeling, when you, we are in the position to uh, talk about all possible outcomes. In the random experiment, we, if we are not able to say what are the all possible outcome, then it is meaningless to talk about probabilistic modeling. So, what is the essential criteria of probabilistic modeling? We should know all possible outcome and the list of all possible outcome, we call it sample of space. We denote it by uh, capital omega. This one is a Greek letter and a few book may, they may call it S. Okay, why? Because they want to sell their book. Then second concept was event. Either you denote it by A or you can denote it by E. And event is what? It is a subspace of sample of space, but it is constructed by a, a statement, an a statement. There must be an a statement. So that is why it is something more than sub, subset. So, you can call it, it is a subset, okay, subset along with it satisfy a given a statement and there might be underlying a statement, there must be a, a statement. If you are willing to note down, you can note down because I am trying to write it through here, I do not have mouse and other kind of things, uh, it is difficult to write it directly. And a, a statement. Okay. So it must be created by a statement as a subset of uh, where it is created in the omega. So it is subset means it is a subset of omega, and uh, construction is done by an uh, a statement. And the third and important uh, basic concept of a probability modeling was. Uh, probability measure. In layman way, you call it probability of an event. So, you know from your high school con concept, you call it. It is very much important concept, probability measure. And once you are having idea of probability measure, you talk about computation of probability measure. That means in term of number, probability measure. You call it probability measure. Then we will talk about uh, types of probability measures, uh, type of probabilistic modeling. It will be based on the, the nature of sample of space, probability measure. Okay. So, in short, we denote it by capital P and it is a map from all possible event of and random experiment. That means you, if you are fixing random experiment, that means you are fixing the corresponding sample of space and the all, all collection of all possible event. I am not say, saying that collection of all possible subset. How many subset omega will have? 2 to the power n subset. If, suppose omega is containing n number of elements, then it will have 2 to the power n subset. I am not talking about that. I am talking about uh, uh, event. So, that we call it sigma algebra. So, cap probability measure, it is a map from sigma algebra of omega to close interval 0, 1. So, probability is always between 0 and 1, including 0 and 1. So, all these three concepts I had already discussed. Then I discussed the nature of probabilistic modeling. So, if our sample type, if sample of space is a discrete set, so what convention I had taken for computational framework of discrete set? What I had told, what is meaning of discrete set? If I say this one is a discrete set, omega is a discrete set, what does it mean? What? Unable to listen. What, what is meaning of discrete set? Just speak loudly someone. Element of the set. Yeah. Nice. It would be only that. Okay. 
just uh, it looks it is visible to you uh, so much application of sequence so what is meaning of when you simply simply say that omega is a discrete set in short i will write it d dot uh, s dot if someone is say then okay omega is a discrete set then in just it will imply that it say that omega is what it is a set where element can be written in term of a sequence we are getting so all the element are written in term of a sequence omega so it becomes a sequence of element of omega so we can say that which which element which out element of omega is what outcomes possible outcome so we can say that which outcome come first which outcome come later so we can say that so it is sequence of outcome so we will call it uh, omega k k belongs to natural number as a sequence you know that idea of sequence i had already explained and also you people know about idea of sequence and if your uh, that sample of space is a uh, discrete set that means it is written in term of a sequence of outcomes then you come up with probability measure you define probability measure you define a probability measure how you define how we had defined probability measure it is a assignment number between 0 to 1 it is a number between 0 to 1 which satisfy so as a map uh, which satisfy uh, it is a function simply say that it is a function from uh, sigma algebra sigma is greek, greek word it is very much related with the union or addition kind of things to 0 open interval 0 1 and satisfy the following properties and through this property we will compute probability measure what are those property first property is what is the first property probability measure of a, a null set what is meaning of null set null event call it null event probability measure of a null event what does it means there is no outcome in that event it is zero and probability measure of sample space means you are talking about all possible outcome that means certainty is coming so probability, probability measure of uh, sample of space is equal to 1 ok the second property I had discussed if you are taking any proper event what is meaning of proper event that means we had already mentioned phi and omega no, the, now we will take a take an event which is between phi and omega neither it is equal to phi nor it is equal to omega that means we are talking about proper set it contains some outcome possible outcome ok so so probability measure of a proper event it would be between 0 to 1 yeah 0 and 1 so strictly it is neither equal to 0 nor equal to 1 so here you can talk about it is taking value in the open interval 0 1 open interval 0 1 you can call all these recap in order to link the previous lectures and the third property was what yeah third name of third property also you can call it some ability property as well another name sigma it is coming some ability property so if you are taking any two mutually disjoint event a and b and i am asking to compute probability of union of these two then what would be that it would be just you will get it by summing the individual probability so if i am saying the probability of a union b it is just summability kind of thing summation somewhat related with summation so probability of a union b it is equal to probability of a plus probability of b where a and b are mutually disjoint there is no what is meaning of mutually disjoint there is no common element between a and b 
then I will ask mutually uh, uh, mutually disjoint and some other thing uh, mutually exclusive also I will ask later. So here what is uh, that uh, provided A intersection B is a null set. A intersection B is a null set. Okay. So I had discussed probability measure and right now I am uh, talking about uh, discrete uh, set, sample space as a discrete set. Then I had discussed, I had told that uh, uh, see the finite structure. If you are willing to compute probability measure, you have to see the finite structure. So in the discrete case, how you will see finite structure? In the discrete case, how, what is meaning of finite structure in discrete case? That means the omega is containing finite number of element. That means we say that omega is containing n number of element, n number of outcome. So that means uh, omega is, it is saying that omega is having uh, n number of outcome. So omega is actually a finite sequence. We say that here ome omega, small omega k, k varies from 1 to n that is meaning of finiteness in discrete sample space k varies from 1 to n ok. So if you take an event in this finite uh, sample space that event would also contain finite number of outcome because it is a subset it is contained in omega. So if you are taking an event A in omega so definitely it will contain a finite number of outcomes suppose call it k r or k something like k you can call it it k notation i have already taken so i am not taking i am taking it r so what is the probability of a how i had defined probability of a recall it I am saying that R by N that should be the concluding mark in the computation of probability measure in case of finite sample space. That would be concluding mark that means you just put full stop there after that you are not uh, doing anything that is the approach of probability uh, measure it is not like that what you have studied in your high school. It should not the definition of probability measure should not uh, start with with R by N something like that fraction kind of thing should not that should be the last point. Anyone? What is the probability of A? What is the probability of A? Hmm? I had done examples also competition. Yes? That I am saying not uh, that should be last point. That I am saying that should be last. After using that number of element in A divided by number of element in omega, put full stop. You can't go further. That should be the concluding re remark. Finished, full stop. After that, you are not. I am saying what is the probability of A? Just how you are computing it? I am talking about competition. Any other? Recall the uh, lecture 2. How I had computed. Record, recall lecture 2. I had uh, taken that uh, process. Uh, otherwise, no, uh, use your notebook. No idea. Uh, she is in the uh, fourth. Just ask her to get up. Uh, she is just sleeping. Don't sleep in class. I am asking just uh, use your notebook and compute, compute it. Actually, why I am talking all this again, he told that it is very difficult. That, that means you are not doing routing work, what I, you are not going the right way. So I will make to see everything here like this way. Uh, I am asking to, in this example, what are the given things here you are having, here 
it is saying that omega is a discrete set omega is a discrete set sample aspect that it is containing finite number of outcome omega k k varies from 1 to n okay we are having a random experiment where the omega is finite set now second we can we came up with event an event constructed by a statement and that we call it a so it is containing finite number of outcome as well some collection of outcome so we will call it subsequence notation notation might be cumbersome notation so i am calling it uh, omega k uh, i subsequence note pattern so in some book of uh, calculus uh, you will see that k i i varies from 1 to r i varies from 1 to r okay like that kind of situation now the now you are willing to find probability measure you are willing to find probability measure that means probability measure it is a map from sigma is a map from you can note down your notebook i don't bother about that if you are slow in uh, initial lectures because you are just uh, getting uh, acquainted with a new way of computing probability measure so uh, slow little bit slowness is allowed but later you have to gain pace so we are willing to compute this okay so how what uh, concept you have to come up with if someone is saying that there is a uh, random experiment and apart from that uh, the first law is coming as uniform law apart from property measure it is satisfying property the first law is coming from uh, if it, no law is mentioned there we say that every outcome is equally likely that in probability we call it uniform probability law so here we call it uniform probability. I mean nothing, uh, no a specific thing is mentioned here. We call it in order to compute probability measure of an event in the finite sample of space. Then we say that we are having uniform pr probability law. Uniform. That means uh, e probability law. In short, I will write it. P R O. Uniform probability law okay and in layman way you call it equally likely outcomes the outcomes are how you say that equally likely outcome or equally likely outcome you are having equally likely outcome likely outcome okay this this might be clear to everyone okay because no previous law is mentioned no prior law is mentioned so equally likely so under this what we say that probability of omega 1 omega 1 is what first outcome probability probability of omega 1 you can put here when you are talking about omega 1 as a, as an event it should be within curly bracket but we can leave it just for notation convention equal to probability of omega 2 all the outcomes here in the finite sample space are equally likely so that means no prior information we are having so that's why we are putting the equal likely situation the probability of omega 3 or the outcome omega 3 and likewise you will go you will talk about actually an outcome is not having probability 
a set containing an outcome that one is having probability that that is the convention okay just you should again recall that but loosely we are writing it like this way probability of the event containing omega n okay this one is coming through equally likely principle this uniform probability law so this we call it equation one or expression one whatever you call it what is the second recall from property of probability measure probability of sample space is one and what we know what is sample space some sample space is containing these n number of om omegas and omega if you talk about omega 1 and omega 2 yes both are mutually disjoint there is no common thing between omega 1 and omega 2 so you can say that omega you are writing in term of union of n mutually disjoint event that means here omega we have written it like this way omega we have written it like this way it is a partitioning it is talking about partitioning so omega is written as union of omega 1 the capital omega union of omega 2 you can note down your in your notebook likewise it will go union of omega and and i don't have to explicitly write that uh, this uh, uh, partition are mutually disjoint that uh, that one is obvious to everyone okay so omega is written like this way so if you apply the summability probability uh, summability properties of the uh, uh, example of uh, probability measure based on that you will say that probability of omega is actually equal to probability of omega 1 plus probability of omega 2 plus probability of omega 3 up to probability of omega n. So, it is based on property of uh, the probability major, probability of omega 1 and probability of uh, uh, omega 1 within the curly bracket both are same. So, so here probability of omega, uh, the capital omega is equal to probability of omega 1 plus probability of omega 2 here everywhere cap p is capital it is not a small letter omega are having two different notation capital and small it will go up to probability of uh, omega omega n ok call it uh, uh, what is the value of this Proti this one is equal to 1 now you are having two equation and n unknown but uh, the equation one is saying uh, equality things are there if you solve these two what you will get probability of omega 1 plus probability of omega 1 plus probability up to n time so n n time it is coming so n time probability of omega 1 equal to 1 so probability of omega 1 is equal to 1 by n and hence probability of omega 2 is equal to or so by solving these two in together what you will get probably you will directly i am writing it here what you will get probability of omega 1 equal to probability of omega 2 equal to probability of omega 3 and likewise probability of omega n it is equal to 1 by n this you got this you got it through uniform law and the properties of probability measure you got it now uh, tell me what is the probability of a what is probability of a A is containing R number of outcome and each outcome is having probability 1 by n. So, 1 by n how many times you are summing? R times. 
so it would be r by n so that is the final conclusion so probability of a would be it is containing r number of outcome so you are summing 1 by n how many times r time 1 by n plus 1 by n and it will go up to 1 by n r times 1 by n here so it, the answer is r by n and this is the full stop you do not go beyond of that full stop from the probability point of view a fraction point of view you can put in a minimal fractal uh, fractional notation you can put it that that one is part of uh, 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 analysis calculus ok right now I am doing probability. So, probability job is done and later computational thing you can simplify it, uh, simplify it further probability full stop the probability is done and then if you are writing 1 by 2 <coughs> then probability is done and later you to put in fraction a decimal represent 0.5 that one is part of analysis or calculus not part of property ok so that we do. So, here just a full stop so that is the definition of uh, com our computation of probability measure in case of finite sample space ok. Uh, this one was discrete probabilistic modeling when discrete set. Now, I had discussed any question till now here T is it clear to you that, that you had raised a question you had uh, said that r by n. Now, your answer will be now r by n or something else after descri describing all these it would be r by n again yeah so, so simply you say that it is a concluding things okay concluding thing and you have to compute like this way uh, the equation 1 equation getting equation 1 and equation 2 those are very important thing those you have to get it and then you will come to know other things I had discussed in lecture 2 as well. So, now I will come to continuous probabilistic modeling. So, everyone have noted down this, so then I am erasing all this. So, the continuous things I had already discussed actually it is very zigzag. In the video you will find all these things, uh, it will be not erased. you can take snapshot from their video what I had written here. The PowerPoint is having lot of interesting thing no one can explain just uh, utilize PowerPoint as much as possible you will get better use of that. only issue I see here writing slowness, but I do not want to go to that tablet version of laptop that also their writing is much feasible and easier laptop is better. So, here I will talk about uh, uh, finite uh, ok continuous probabilistic modeling. So, here when we say that continuous probability uh, probabilistic modeling what is meaning of that your sample space is a continuous set what is meaning of continuous set in short I am writing C dot S dot what is meaning of continuous set points are coming in continuum manner uh, yeah it is contained in short interval years point is coming in interval, uh, interval manner uh, or continuum manner continuum interval both are same then what does it mean that we fail to write omega in term of a single sequence of point of the omega. So, that means it simply say that omega is it implies that omega is not equal to a single sequence of points of omega. So, we are unable to write omega in term of a uh, we do unable to uh, uh, do a sequential visualization of uh, 
outcome in omega we fail to write okay we fail to write like this way what does it mean that means omega contains interval or union of intervals some kind of interval call it a b or union of intervals so points are coming in continuum manner so this is continuous probabilistic modeling it implies that uh, omega contains some kind of interval okay some intervals are there point of intervals are there in omega it is meaning of that okay if that is the situation then how will get uh, a form of probability measure so if you are willing to get form of probability measure you have to come up with a finite structure finite structure that finite structure i had mentioned that the finite structure in discrete set is different than finite structure in continuous set so the finite structure it is very much related with if you are trying to recall it in your high school mathematics then you had seen that that uh, some uh, integration can be written in term of limit of summation so that summation is talking about finite structure okay so uh, just recall the uh how you re uh, recall finite structure so you are having an interval i am taking omega very simple case i have taken omega is equal actually interval okay uh, so take uh, here when that situation is there uh, you may say that it is difficult situation but nothing is difficult in mathematics if you understand it so here uh, independent thing always we take it along horizontal axis so this one is our interval ab okay this one is omega now what you do uh, uh, you are coming with uh, finite structure of omega what does it mean partition partition this given interval into sub intervals call those sub interval mutually disjoint sub interval yeah that common terminal point may be same but it is mutually disjoint we can consider it. so disjoint so we have converted uh, this omega into and partition size it depends upon your choice it would be uh, partition if you two it would be three it would be four one is not possible n equal to one what does it mean it is the interval itself so 2 3 4 5 6 7 as you increase n that means you are performing refinement you are refining it much refinement okay that means better approximation you talk when you do refining uh, that means better approximation so here omega you have divided into sub interval call it uh, i1 i2 union of i union of i1 i2 and uh, likewise you will go you talk about uh, general sub interval uh, ik and ik minus 1 also you can talk or uh, i ii is not uh, looking good in uh, pronouncing so i am that's why i am calling it ik ik and it is going like that what is the last uh, uh, sub interval what is the last in
the last is i n ok and remember that n must be greater than 1 and various cases I had discussed you can re relate it to. So, n must be greater than equal to 2 n must be greater than equal to 2. So, how you do that? We come up with uh, and all these things interval and other things notation I had discussed that you can write partition uh, this uh, this part kind of partition that means uh, you can represent partition through nodal points better representation that it, it gives. And here uh, uh, you, are, you have taken a partition of the uh, interval a b and each uh, we have done partition in such a way we call it uniform partition. What does it mean? Width of each sub interval is same that we call it delta. Delta is x k minus x k minus 1 ok. And if we say uniform partition uniform width then what is the delta in relation with the total width of the interval it would be nth part. So, b minus a divided by n. So, this way it is coming. So, it is uniform if you are making you are willing to make it difficult you can go for non uniform partition that would be not up to at this level you do not require that. Okay. So, under the uniform law we are willing to compute the probability measure. So, here we have taken uniform law now here we have taken uniform yeah uniform law. So, under the uniform law you will say that probability of observing points in the first sub interval is equal to probability of observing points in the second interval sub interval and likewise. So, this is coming with respect to uniform law this one is coming with respect to uniform law ok because no a special law is mentioned here. And also we observe that points are coming in continuum manner. So, it is all about com com computing probability is equivalent to computing area in the sub intervals. So, everyone know that area is what? Area of rectangle is what? Height into width, height into width. So, everywhere width is coming and all the sub interval is having same width height is varying uh, you can say that like, but uniform principle under uniform principle height are same. If you are saying uniform principle height are same in everywhere in every sub interval height are same ok. And here delta is same what does it mean? Why? Why we are saying height is same? Because this uniform condition we have already taken. Also we have taken under the uniform partition we have taken delta is same for all the sub intervals ok. So, here simply say that uh, if you talk about probability of kth sub interval it is just c k times delta and we know that uh, under uniform law all these probability of sub intervals are same. So, we will say that c 1 equal to c 2 equal to c 3 up to c n ok. And hence we can say that if I am saying that what is the probability of a, a kth sub interval in partition of uh, interval a b n partition in interval a, a b it is c times delta c is here fixed constant and delta is also fixed constant. So, it is coming like this way. So, this this one is coming through uniform law of probability uniform probability law you can call call it you call it equation 1 this call you can say that either call it this or this ok. Now, you come to apply axioms or property of uh, probability measure then how uh, how you will apply there the summability law probability of uh, this n sub interval sum of n sub interval it would be equal to what it would be equal to what would be what c k constant for kth sub interval that uh, uh, probability of uh, uh, kth uh, sub interval it is what proportional to width of the delta na? then pro proportional to the constant is coming there na? the proportional to then when you are removing converting probability uh, the pro proportional to constant into equality then the constant will come there, come there na? same thing it is. So, here you can see that 
probability of sample space it is equal to probability of union of this uh, first uh, sub interval second sub interval and another sub interval all these are mutually determined so you can write it as a sum sum of these one okay and if you do this summation right hand side summation then c time delta is coming how many times n time so n times c time delta you got it and this n times c time delta is equal to 1 this you can call it equation 2 and here from here you can deduce c what is c here 1 by n time delta and what is delta b minus a by n so n n will cancel out and we will have here c equal to 1 by b minus a this one is the proportionality constant this is the proportionality constant and if you put back in equation 1 probability of case interval is c time delta means it is equal to delta by b minus a what is delta delta is the width of the sub interval and what is the uh, uh, quantity in denominator b minus a it is the width of the sample space width of the sample space so again i am saying that this one is the concluding remark so in case of uh, sample space when it is a interval ab close interval ab then how you compute probability of a uh, partition case interval sub interval it is just ratio of length of sub intervals okay divide by length of the omega it is uh, it is coming in uh, continuous probabilistic modeling so this we had already discussed okay i will talk about today few examples based on, based on this any question till now any question here no so i will go to uh, discuss some questions so take a linear dot there are various kind of uh, i think everyone might have uh, heard uh, circular dots elliptical dots uh, dot have you heard or not have you seen or not elliptical dot now i am talking about linear dot uh, that means you uh, draw a line on the wall and uh, fix the point uh, uh, fix the interval in which you are willing to hit you want to play okay and the point zero is bullseye that means uh, what is meaning of that that if you hit at 0 or near by 0 then you will get full mass and if you are just going away then mass will reduce and if you are going out of the range there is no mass okay like that so if uh, i am asking so it is linear just linear dot game so here consider one throw a dart at a linear dart, uh, dart board and measure the horizontal distance from the bullseye or center okay at x equal to 0. So, what is the sample space? First, you have to compute the sample space. What is the sample space here? It is x is actually minus so 1 by 2 to 1 by 2 here. Okay. Minus 1 by 2 to 1. By. So, sample as, this is the sample space, the closed interval minus 1 by 2 to 1 by 2. This is the sample space. And now, I am asking uh, to compute probability of an interval a b within the sample space what is the probability of a b it is just uh, width of the inter uh, interval a b that is b minus a divided by width of the sample space what is the width of sample space 1 by 2 minus of minus 1 by 2 that means 1 plus 1 it is 1 so the probability of an interval in this uh, linear dot game it is b minus a width okay this is the way, very simple problem if I am asking what is the probability of x equal to 0 anyone what is the probability of x equal to 0 or here you put it like this way next question is based on that actually uh, and the last question I am say, saying here, what is the probability of x equal to 0 this point was 0 that means there is an interval whose terminal and initial point both are same end point and a starting board. what is the probability of x equal to 0 what is the probability of center hitting at center i am asking you to hit at the 0 point 0 can you hit that i am asking you you will get a full reward only in case if you are hitting at 0 exactly at 0 is it possible to hit exactly at 0 
not possible. You will say that I need little bit width, epsilon width, call it epsilon width. So, that is way probability of 0, it, probability of hitting exactly at 0, it is what is the probability? It is rare, it is 0, almost impossible event. So, probability of hitting at 0 in case of continuous things, uh, continuous sample space, it is equal to 0, almost impossible. So, that is why there is no uh, criteria like that you have to, in order to get full mass, you have to hit at exactly that point. It is not such criteria. Archery game, you might have heard, seen all those kind of things. Okay. So, uh, there must be some kind of width, some kind of epsilon width. Call it epsilon means it is a small positive real number, a small positive, as a small as possible, depends upon your, your choice. So, you are taking a small epsilon. So, if I am asking what is the probability of uh, hitting epsilon near to 0, this we call it epsilon neighborhood or you call it epsilon near to 0. So, what is probability of hitting in epsilon near to 0? So, here you will call it that epsilon near to 0 means you are talking about between minus epsilon and epsilon, minus epsilon and epsilon. What is the probability? Width you had already seen 1. So, what is the probability? It is twice of epsilon, it would be just twice of width of the that inter, uh, sub interval. So, it is twice of epsilon. So, better you can take it epsilon by 2. So, epsilon by 2 plus epsilon by 2 it would be epsilon. So, it depends upon 2 factor you can remove it. So, so it is like that, Okay, that criteria. Take another game, uh, that round dot board, circular type of board. Okay. Here the sample space is, it is unit elliptical region in unit that radius is 1. This, this is the sample space. If you are uh, willing to participate in this game and you are willing to score something, you have to hit within the unit uh, disk. Okay. So, that is why sample space is this. Now, you will get 10 point if you are hitting in this region. Radius is point 0.1. Radius is point 0.1. What is the square of point 0.1? Point 0.01. So, a square, in, a square form it is written. So, radius is point 0.1 that means 10 percent. Uh, you will get 10 point. You will get 10 point. So, this is the event. I am asking you to compute probability of A. What is the probability of A? Here length will not come here. Here what will come? Area will come. Again uniform law is coming here. So, under that area probability of A would be area of A divided by area of omega. Okay. Area of A divided by om area of omega. So, here uh, why area is coming here? Anyone? Why area is coming? Hmm? This is aerial thing it is having 2D uh, representation. What is disk? This is, this is actually, it is a planar kind of things. You know. Disk is planar thing. No? So, area and if I talk about line, line is what? Linear thing. There would be length only. And if I talk about a special thing, what would come? Volume will come there and likewise it will go further. Likewise, okay. So, I think uh, it is clear to everyone. So, why? So, it is all about uh, you have to see the structure of sample of space that word is helping to compute probability of the corresponding event. So, what, what sample of space you are having at hand, you go with that. Okay. Then another question is that arrival time. Everyone might be coming here through by bus or something like that arrival time. So, again it is all these are part of continuous probability modeling. So, if I am saying that a person uh, always arrive at his job between 8 to 8.20 am, he is equally likely to arrive at any time within that period. So, what is the probability that he will arrive at sharp 8.10? What is this probability? 0, sharp 8.10 that one is 0. Now, next question is what is the probability that he will arrive between 8.5 to 8.10? So, 5 by 
so here this is the event 5 uh, 85 to 810 and this is the sample space you have to properly write it like that and what is the probability of the desired interval it is we know that as per uniform law so the probability that he comes sharp at uh, uh, sorry between 85 to 810 it is 5 by 20 20 is the width of the sample space and 5 is the width of event so 5 by 20 that means 1 by 4 okay so this is the calculation another thing i think everyone might have heard uh, that uh, shakespeare's uh, uh, writing on uh, romeo and juliet something like that uh, so problem is just name is taken from there uh, actually romeo and juliet have a date on a given time each will arrive at a meeting place with a delay of 0 to 1 hour with all pair of delays are equally likely uniform law so the first to arrive have to wait for 15 minutes and leave the first among the Romeo Juliet, first who will arrive have to wait for 15 minutes and then have to leave. Okay. Uh, and will leave. Okay. If the other is not arriving, if other is not arriving, if we are arriving then okay. So, compute the probability of the meeting. What is the probability of meeting? What is the probability of meeting? So, here uh, X is talking about delay time for Romeo, Y is talking about delay time for uh, Juliet. Okay. So, uh, if Romeo is coming, then have to wait for 5 minutes, 15 minutes. 15 means, uh, uh, minute means uh, 1 by 4 hour, 1 by 4 hour. So, what is the meeting time? This is the meeting time. Okay. Sample space is the complete square and the meeting time is M. What is meaning of M? So, this was sample space is the uh, square, unit square and the meeting time is, uh, it is that the difference between delay time between X and Y, it would must be less than equal to 15 minutes less than equal to that means 15 minutes means 1 by 4 hour okay so this is the situation now how you will compute the probability of m just find the area area of m divide by area of yeah area of units uh, square is 1 so that otherwise you go that other or better you see geometry if you try to see geometry here so it does look like what triangle and you know the uh, that uh, what is the width uh, height of the triangle and width of the triangle it is 3 by 4 3 by 4 okay and what is the area of this region we are interested to find area of this region that happens to be the required probability so uh, this uh, subtract this area and this area both are similar area so what is the area of this one 1 by 2 into 3 by 4 into 3 by 4 and two time uh, coming so 1 by 2 uh, you have to sum it and that means multiply with 2 so it is it is what the desired probability is 1 minus 3 by 4 into 3 by 4 and just answer is 7 by 16 this this the so all these are coming through uniform law okay any question till now no question so we will go to discuss about another there is another waiting bus example uh, you can see it uh, it is also coming in the similar way okay uh, uh, you are arriving here suppose uh, you missed the institute bus okay then you have to come at the nearest bus stop from your hostel and then you have to wait for the bus and if you talk about uh, that probability related with the waiting type of, of bus it is a continuous probabilistic modeling so same thing is here. so we are waiting for a bus at the bus stop we make the modeling assumption that the bus always come within at most one hour that means what is the sample space 0 to 1 in hour unit is hour but it is coming equally likely to uh, at any time within this hour equally likely principle we are taking it like now here sample space would be 0 to 1 interval 0 to 1 now consider the example that the, there are following two uh, subset one subset is having x to x plus 1 bus you got between x to x plus epsilon another uh, situation is there bus is between y to uh, y plus epsilon so how you will consider it how you will consider it how you will compute the probability of a and uh, probability of a is just here you have to see it what is the length of the sample space length of sample space is what it is 1 length of sample space it is 1 so based on that 
it is when in denominator quantity is coming 1, it is very much uh, easy to compute the uh, what we call it uh, uh, probability of corresponding event. So, easily it would be epsilon. Next, uh, uh, how many of you are com very much comfortable with uh, uh, counting principle? Counting, how many of you very much comfortable with counting principle? Counting principle, have you heard counting principle or not? Not. If you ha haven't heard, then also say no. And counting principle, actually permutation combination in short. Have you heard or not? So, it is all about uh, when you are having sample of space in discrete uh, probability modeling where sample of space is finite, their permutation combination will come a lot. So, there you have to develop idea of uh, principle of counting. You have to develop idea of principle of counting and uh, uh, how many of, uh, so what is the basic law in which principle of counting is based on? What are the basic law in permutation combination? or in short combinatory. What are the basic law you had seen? What are the basic law? There are two type of law, addition law and multiplication law. If things happen in sequential manner, what law is coming? Multiplication. If things happening in case manner, a category, categorical manner, so addition law is coming. And if you talk about uh, permutation combination, which one is coming first, permutation or permut combination? Which one is coming first? What? Someone is saying permutation, another combination. Which one is coming first, permutation or combination? Combination. Permutation. I am not playing as KBC kind of things. See, see the pattern of uh, that. Uh, uh, that uh, permutation combination in your high school, which one you have uh, read first, just tell. Permutation is coming first or permutation combination is coming first? Combination. Very much firm, not firm, confused. You have to see the order as well, which one is uh, coming first. So, uh, actually whatever will come, actually uh, all are based on uh, those two basic law, addition and multiplication law. So, those things we will discuss in detail in principle of counting. Actually, do we have time? Actually, last uh, 30 minutes we are having few things I will discuss and uh, other also I have uploaded various lectures on that. You can watch there in YouTube as well. Okay. So, it is very much essential to understand principle of counting in order, in order to compute probability in uh, discrete uh, finite sample space. So, principle of counting it is very much uh, simple that you had already seen that when your sample space is a, a discrete and finite set, finite discrete set, then uh, the concluding remark of probability measure it is of an event, it happens to be number of outcome in A divided by number of outcome in the sample space. This you had already seen. So, here you are counting number of things. That means counting principle will come here. So, and uh, one more thing that you have also seen that uh, one kind of P, okay, small p, probability of success. If you are tossing a coin, then getting head you can treat as a success. Probability of getting head. If, if you are ap uh, appearing in an exam, passing in a course, you can consider, consider as a success and failure you can call it the failure simply like that. What is the probability of passing of a, a student in this course? So, passing probability it would be something like that if you are getting marks above 30 or something like that. It will be actually here relative grading is here something like that. So, some some some, some kind of nominal uh, basic uh, probability concept would be uh, uh, there and uh, that uh, basic probability you can compute it at outcome level, outcome level. If you are tossing coin outcomes are head and tail. So, getting head that one is saying the probability of success of success, the P. And if you are uh, tossing coin many times, multiple times, so you will compute probability of uh, any event in term of P, in term of P. So, that is where P times something will come there. P, probability of success and how many times success are coming. If you are tossing coin n times, how many times success is coming? P times, if K, it is coming K times, so P times K, 
like that that scenario is coming then <clears throat> here first addition law uh, again i will so suppose we perform an experiment and having r option we are performing an experiment in r option cases wise that means either uh, suppose we are willing to go uh, from here to actually there is only one way to go to your hostel from your, that road no? uh, actually uh, if you are willing to go the main gate there are many way to go okay uh, at least two three way you will, you can find it like that so likewise there are many options so each option is having various possibilities various possibility possible outcome okay uh, uh, then if you are talking about total possible outcome with r option in order to carry out the experiment what would be that just summation rule will come there and one is that means number of ways you are performing through r options and two is number of ways you are performing through second option and r is number of ways you are performing through uh, r option so case wise so you call it uh, cases there case 1 uh, case 2 and like case r in case 1 you are performing experiment in n1 wage in case 2 you are performing the experiment in n2 wage and likewise uh, n2 wage so one example through example it would be clear uh, like suppose you are in a restaurant and going to have either soup or slath but not both at the same time okay so uh, there are two soups and four slath on the menu how many choices uh, do you have how many choices do you have so uh, first option first option is uh, soup second option is salad how many soup are there two how many salads are there four so how many choices you are having six choices so multiple addition rule is coming now suppose you are performing r experiment such that a case experiment happens in uh, nk possible way and then uh, that uh, po number of possible outcome for a sequence of r experiment sequence sequence is coming and when we say sequence that means order is very much important that means first uh, one is happening in any way after first is have already happened we are talking about occurrence of second one second one is happening in n2 wage and likewise the rth one is happening in nr wage so what is the total number of possible outcomes n1 n2 n2 n3 up to nr so it is a multiplication rule so again example is coming like that if you there is a coffee uh, house and co in that coffee house coffee ha the, a coffee has three types dark roast light roast and decaf so you can order your coffee in a small or large cup a small or large cup so in how many way you can order your coffee so remember that here sequencing is happening sequencing is happening how sequencing sequencing is happening regarding the type of coffee once you first you have to decide the type of coffee then you have to decide size of glass size of glass okay a smaller large size of glass uh, so you have to so there are two uh, sequence term first one is this one is type of copy or uh, this one is talking about in the second once you are defining type of copy then you will talk about larger or small like that so here sequential manner it is not like that case manner Ca case is coming here not it is sequence it is coming in sequential manner so what are the possible ways it is type of coffee how many type of copy are there three type of copy okay three branches for first sequence three and uh, for each uh, one there are two branches the second three two, two. so six total six two. so it is uh, one example of multiplication rule then if you 